In Mark chapter 10 tonight, starting at verse number 46. Mark chapter 10 and verse number 46. The Bible says this, And they came to Jericho, and as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Can I say that again? Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace, but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Thank God for the word of God tonight. Praise God. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I come to this pulpit tonight to declare unto you that it's time to cry out to Almighty God. I, I told Pastor Lehman before service, I, he, I got the text asking me to, to, to preach tonight, and I went to prayer, and when I went to prayer, God took me to this verse of Scripture, and when I got to those, that phrase, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I was arrested in my spirit, and I felt I felt a check in my spirit, and I felt like there's somebody at Capitol Community Church on this Sunday night that you're crying something the very same as that in your spirit and in your mind. And I heard a cry in the spirit, Jesus, help me. And if I get it aloud tonight, I want to, I want to apologize, although I'm not really sorry. If I get a little loud tonight, because if somehow we can get Jesus to stand still tonight and to turn around to where we're at and show his power and show his glory in somebody's life, it will be worth everything to happen in the house of God tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may not be articulating the words the very same as Bartimaeus did, but somewhere deep inside of somebody's spirit tonight, you're wrestling with something that's bigger than what you are, and you're crying, Jesus, help me. And I just come to tell you, he's in the house tonight to help you with whatever you have need of in the name of Jesus Christ. You've heard this before. It's not original with me, but let me tell you, if Jesus Christ is in the house, anything can happen by the power of Almighty God. Sorry for getting all fired up at the very first. Should have waited to the very end, but I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost power here. I feel God challenging somebody to let her cry out of your spirit tonight. Jesus, help me. I can't handle this in my own power. I can't handle this in my own spirit and in my own mind. I need the help of Almighty God in my life. Yeah, let that rumble go. Let that rumble go just for a moment. The power. Hmm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to tell somebody, God's hearing your cry right now. God's hearing your cry. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
the day began just like any other day for blind Bartimaeus. But I want to tell you that day did not end like every other day did for Bartimaeus. Waking up, he shook the straw from his shabby torn garments, stretched, got to his feet, and began tapping his way along the familiar turns which led to the main gate in Jericho. Perhaps somewhere along the way, he was able to beg a crust of bread or two at some familiar stops along the way. Arriving at the gate, he took his regular place with the other beggars, which he, where he drew his cloak tightly around him. As he sat there, just like so many days before, <laughs> just like so many days before, I'm telling you, folks, tonight can be different. Tonight can be different. Lion Bartimaeus sat there listening to the city come to life. First a donkey loaded with melons for the market. After that, several women chatting as they bore pitchers towards the well. And the clomp of camel's hooves and the aroma of fish borne along to the market. Soon Jericho was humming with activity and Bartimaeus was sitting there chanting his beggar's cry like he did every other day. It's just pounding in my spirit. This day doesn't have to be the same as every other day. Suddenly, Bartimaeus lifted his head. His blind, sensitive ears heard the hubbub of a great crowd approaching. First came young boys as they running before the crowd with shrill cries and playing in, the, in front of the crowd. Then more people hurrying past the gate that's where Bartimaeus was, talking excitedly. Bartimaeus reached out his hand and asked what was happening. And a passerby replied, Jesus of Nazareth, the one who heals the lame and the lepers and the blind, the one some are saying is the Messiah, is passing by right now. Bartimaeus had probably heard about Jesus before because everybody had been talking about Jesus' exploits and his words and the deeds that he had done. And Bartimaeus had probably even heard a first-person testimony from someone who had heard and had seen his, the miracles of Jesus Christ. I want to stop here long enough to say this. If you've got a first-person testimony of the power of God, don't keep it to yourself. Tell somebody else. Come on, somebody ought to wave your hand right now and not say, I know the touch of Jesus Christ. I know what Jesus Christ can do. I know what the power of God can do. I know how he can perform by the power of his spirit and by the power of his name. Oh, thank God for the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And there's some first-person testimonies at CCC tonight that should not be kept silent. We should open our voice and proclaim it because there could be a blind Bartimaeus somewhere handy to where we're at that will hear what we're saying and get a hold of faith in Almighty God. So when Jesus passes by, Bartimaeus will reach out and get a touch from the power of Almighty God. Aren't you glad somebody told you about Jesus Christ one day? Aren't you glad somebody brought the gospel, brought the good news of Jesus Christ into your life one day? So Bartimaeus' heart began to pound. The crowd was passing by. People called one to another. Intermittent hosannas rang out. Jesus would soon be gone. He had to do something. So Mark tells us he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David. Oh, I'm not just putting on an act up here, folks. I feel a call in the spirit tonight. Have mercy on me. And many charged him they should hold his peace, but he cried out the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And I come to tell somebody your need is not financial and your need is not earthly and temporal things. Your need is the mercy of Almighty God to reach into your life and show his power and show his might. Jesus, thou son of David. And the crowd said, be quiet, Bartimaeus. Calm down, Bartimaeus. Don't hold her so loud, Bartimaeus. 
Keep your cry to yourself, Bartimaeus. And Bartimaeus said, there's no way. I've got a need here, and the only way I can get help is for Jesus Christ to touch me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bartimaeus made himself heard. He was crying at the top of his lungs. He was desperate. You ever been in a crowd and that one person cried louder than everybody else? <laughs> just They just almost, I, pardon the terminology, make a fool of themselves. They're crying so hard and they're crying so loud and they're crying so boisterous. But this was Bartimaeus. He was just crying at the top of his lungs. He was desperate. He had believed the testimony of other people and he believed that Jesus could meet his need. So he cried out. Somebody say, cried out. Somebody say, cried out. Oh, come on. Just imagine for a moment that you were brought. Now, can I just say what Justin McKenzie said when he was here? You're masked, but you're not muted. You can still cry out. You can still let your voice out. You can still desire after God. You can still cry after the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bartimaeus, be quiet. Not a chance on your life am I going to be quiet. I know how Bartimaeus felt. I was there one day. I've been there before when I needed a touch from Almighty God. And I had things going on in my life and in my home and in my family that needed the touch and the power of Almighty God. And the only thing I needed to do, knew to do was to cry out, Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He was beyond their control because he had a need. I want to tell you, folks, there may be a time to be silent and there may be a time to be quiet, but for Bartimaeus, this was not the day and this was not the time to be quiet and to be silent. And as I look around our city and I look around our province and look around our nation and I look around our world, I am persuaded this is not the time to be silent. It's time to cry out. We need you, God. We need your power. We need your authority. We need your anointing, God, like never before. We've heard it a thousand and one times in the last six months. We're in uncharted waters here, and the only way we're going to make it through is to put our hand in the hand of the Almighty God and say, Lord, we can't do this without you. So let the storms rage high, let the dark clouds rise. They don't worry me. I'm sheltered safe within the arms of an Almighty God because I know where my help lies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have a real need that only Jesus Christ can meet. So it's time for the church to cry out. Hallelujah. It's time to declare the name of Jesus Christ over our lives, over our homes, over our province, over our nation, and over our world. Is there anybody in the house that really honestly believes way down deep in your spirit there's power in the name of Jesus Christ? Come on, somebody, speak that name right now with authority. Call that name out in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Jesus. We need a visitation, God, a demonstration, God, and a outpouring of your power, God. We need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We desperately need God to do what only he can do. Hallelujah. I was going to throw that mask on the ground and stamp on it. And I thought maybe I better not do that. Just don't miss the point here, please, folks. Don't miss the point. Hopefully the preacher's getting the point across that Bartimaeus was totally aware of his condition. He knew he was blind. And he knew he was in need of help. And it was from that awareness that he cried for help. It was from that awareness of his need that caused him not to be silenced by the crowd around him. Just be calm, Bartimaeus. Just be calm. No way. I have a need. Somebody say, I have a need. I have a need. 
I have a need. It's when we become aware that our help can only come from God that we sense the need to cry out. The psalmist stated the reason very declared very plainly why we need to cry out in Psalms 124 and verse number 8. The psalmist said, Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Let me declare that again. Our help is in the name of the Lord. God's people always got themselves in trouble when they went someplace else looking for help than Almighty God. Always caused disruption in the plan of God and the people of God's life when they went down to Egypt or they went down into some other place or some other God or some other idol and looked there for help and tried to get help somewhere other than God. I want to declare tonight the only help that we need and the only help that we really have is in the power of the name of the Lord our God whom we serve. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And the psalmist also let us know how to call upon the name of the Lord in Psalms 55, verses 16 and 17. Psalms 55, 16 and 17. The psalmist said, as for me, I will call upon God. And the Lord shall save me. Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. I'm going to make a declaration in this pulpit. I believe I'm serving a God who hears me when I call. I'm going to cry evening. I'm going to cry morning. I'm going to cry at noon. Every time I get a chance, I'm going to cry out, Jesus! Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I'm going to stop typing in my office at the Bible school and I'm going to lean my head back. Get ready, Brother Calhoun. I'm going to lean my head back and I'm going to cry, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Because my help is in the name of Almighty God. Hallelujah. More evening, morning, and at noon, I'm going to cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Whew. I told myself I was going to be calm tonight. But I feel the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Exactly what Daniel did, what Daniel did when he was faced with the lion's den. Then men in Daniel's day tried to find some occasion against Daniel to, to torment him and to and to persecute him in some way. And the Bible says the only thing they could find wrong with Daniel was his devotion to God. And they thought, well, we're going to attack that, so we're going to make a decree that they can't, they can't pray to any other God for a while. They're going to make a petition of any other person but the king for a while. And the Bible says in Daniel chapter 6 and verse number 10, now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a four time. What are you going to do, Daniel, when trouble comes? What are you going to do when somebody falls as you, accuses you, Daniel? What's, what are you going to do when somebody attacks your walk with God, Daniel? And I'm going to tell you something in the name of Jesus Christ, and I know we're online, I've got to be careful here, but I'm going to tell you something. That day could come to us someday before very long when we will be challenged on our devotion to God and, and our walk with God and our, and our consecration to God. And Daniel said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I did every other day before this decree was signed. I'm just going to go back. I'm going to call upon God, and God's going to take care of me. Now, Daniel's prayer did not keep him from the lion's den, but it certainly kept him in the lion's den. Daniel's victory over the lion's den came about because Daniel refused to quit calling upon God even when he was ordered to. He still said, I know where my help comes from. I'm not going to stop crying just because somebody made a decree. I've got a devotion to God here. I'm not going to let it go for anybody or anything. I'm going to keep on calling upon Almighty God and God will take care of me. 
And the Bible said he was thrown in the lion's den and God shut the mouth of the lion. And the next morning the king paced up all night and paced the floor all night and couldn't sleep. And the next day he went out and said, Daniel, you're still alive? And he said, oh, king, live forever. The God whom I serve hath delivered me. Because I can just keep crying out to God no matter what's going on in my life. When I'm attacked for my devotion to God, when things come against my relationship with God, I just keep on praying. I just keep on calling upon God. I just keep on saying, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Hallelujah. Somebody clap your hands just for a moment and just, <laughs> hallelujah. 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 Isn't God good? An awesome God that we serve. The children of Israel were in bondage in Egypt, living and working under extreme circumstances, being, being made to make more brick and given less materials. And the word of God declares in Exodus chapter 2 and verse number 23, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt died and the children of Israel sighed by the reason of the bondage and they cried and their cry come up unto God by reason of their bondage. Somebody say their cry. Come up unto God. <laughs> Got to the right place. It struck the right note. It struck the right key. It got in the right place. And the response of God is presented in four words. God here heard them. He heard their groaning. He remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He saw them, and he knew exactly what was going on. Whew. Can I just tell you, when you cry to God out of, the midst of your, out of the midst of your trouble, God hears you. God remembers his covenant with you. God sees you, and God knows exactly what's going on, and he's got the power to do what needs to be done about what's going on in your life. And so the so children of Israel are crying out after God down in Egypt and they go back from making more brick every day and they get back in their homes and they don't go to sleep. They just keep crying out to God saying, God, deliver us. God, set us free. God, bring us out of this. God, see our affliction. God, help us. And, the, and out on the backside of a desert somewhere, there's a man by the name of Moses, and he's walking along one day, and he sees a bush that's on fire, and it's not being consumed. And his curiosity gets the best of him, and he draws aside to see what's going on, why the bush is not being consumed. And when he gets close to it, the voice of God speaks out of the bush. And said, Moses, take off the sh your shoes, the st ground you're standing on is holy ground. And God begins to converse with Moses. Can I just tell you this? If you'll cry out to God, God will answer you. If you'll keep your focus upon the almighty God who's the source of your help, God will talk with you in the wee hours of the morning. God will speak into your spirit. Hallelujah. God will bring you to the house of God and somebody will preach and just, just kind of declare the word of God and it will speak directly. In, come on, somebody can testify to that and God can speak directly into your spirit to the power of the word of God and can help you in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is part of what God told Moses at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, hey, watch this, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So the people of, people of God, the children of Israel are down in Egypt in bondage. They're crying out to God from a place of bondage, and God's hearing their cry. And God arrests the man in the desert and calls him to go down and bring the children of Israel out by the power of Almighty God. A part of what ignited that burning bush on fire was the cry of God's people for help. Hallelujah. It's amazing sometimes what God will do when somebody cries out for his help in the midst of their trouble, in the midst of their circumstance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So I, I, I would say tonight, and I'm open to correction, but I would say tonight, when the children of God cry and Downing Street at CCC on a Sunday night, it activates the power of God somewhere for God to do a supernatural work to show his glory and to show his power in somebody's life. You know, I can pray right here and affect something in China, Brother Woodward. I can pray right here and affect something in Peru or somewhere halfway across the world somewhere or somewhere across Canada because the power of prayer and the power of desire knows no cultural boundaries, knows no country boundaries, knows no provincial boundaries. I can pray and the power of God can minister in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. So you get over the New Testament, and James says it this way in James 5 and 16. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Can I propose to you on this Sunday night at CCC that in order for prayer to be effectual, it has to be continual. Nothing must be allowed to stop our prayer. There is power in praying again. There is power in crying out again. The word of God uses Elijah as an example of effectual prayer. Elijah was not only believing in his prayer, but he was persistent. He prayed, the Bible says, and he prayed again. On Mount Carmel, Elijah continued to pray for rain until his servant reported a cloud like a man's hand. I want to speak directly into somebody's spirit. Don't you dare quit praying what you're praying about. Don't you dare quit praying that need. And you might say, well, it might just be vain repetition. I'm going to tell you, if you're praying in faith and you're praying, believe in Almighty God, it's not vain repetition. It's a desire and a cry from your heart for God to do something powerful and miraculous. Hallelujah. I've got a prayer I'm praying every day. I've been praying it now for four or five years, and I'm not going to give up until God shows his power and God shows his glory and God shows his authority in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've got to keep on praying. So what we're learning here from the word of God is this, is that passionate persistence in crying out to the God brings results into our lives. I love results. I love it. I love praying about something and seeing God's power minister and see God's power work. Hallelujah. (laughs) I know what it's like to lay my hand on a lady at an altar in the name of Jesus Christ and before she got to emergency, which was about a half an hour away, what the growth in the side of her neck was completely gone by the time she got there. I love it. I love it. Hallelujah. I love it. And I know today that prayer works. I know that calling upon God works. Don't miss the point. That Bartimaeus is crying out, cause Jesus to stand still. I'm going to slow down long enough to tell you very calmly today. There is something about a faith-filled cry from the heart that arrests the attention of Jesus Christ. No one is too insignificant. To Jesus to command his attention. Nobody. A leper gets healed. A woman with a hemorrhage gets healed. Little children are ministered to. And now a blind beggar all receive Jesus' care because he really does care about us. The heart's cry, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost, of one with a need causes Jesus to stop and listen. Bartimaeus' call for mercy stopped Jesus. The psalmist said in Psalm 17, in verse number 6, I have called upon thee, 
for thou wilt hear me, O oh God. I wish somebody would say with me, thou wilt hear me, O oh God. Thou wilt hear me. Psalm 66, verses 19 and 20. The psalmist said, but, for, for, but verily God hath heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me. His mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Does the Bible still say that whosoever can come unto him and he will in no wise cast them out? Praise God. I've just come to this pulpit now to tell you it's time to cry out. And if you'll cry out, God will hear you and God will show his power and God will show his authority. Because the benefit of crying out to God is that he hears. And the God that I serve has the power to do something about what we cry out to him about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So Bartimaeus, as we wind this thing up, the music can come back. The music can come back. Bartimaeus had a faith that was determined to reach Jesus Christ. He knew who Jesus Christ was. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. He came humbly to Jesus and told Jesus when he finally got to Jesus, he said, I need my sight. And he submitted to the power of Jesus Christ. Told Jesus what he needed and he got results. Hallelujah. Those wonderful words. Listen to this. Listen to this. Go thy way, Mark 10 and 52. Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Your faith has made you whole. God's calling for a Bartimaeus in this house to stand up out of where you're at and cry out to him. And allow his presence and allow his power to touch your life. And the word of God records, and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. He got what he needed from Jesus Christ. Can I just tell you, there's no greater joy in all the world than to receive from Jesus because you believed enough to cry out to Jesus in your time of need. And I felt compelled to come to this pulpit tonight at Capital Community Church and declare unto you in the name of Jesus Christ, it's time to cry out after Almighty God. It's time to speak the name of Jesus over our nation, over our families, over our friends, over every mountain, over every difficulty in our lives. It's time for us to cry out, Jesus, have mercy. We can't do this by ourselves. And the Bible says that when we cry, he will hear and he will do what needs to be done. Hallelujah. I wonder if you'll stand with me in the house of God tonight. Somebody needs to raise your hands and let your voice out just for a moment. Hallelujah. I hear the cry. Mm, I hear the cry. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. We need you, Lord. Jesus. Come on, Mama, let your cry out. Come on, Dad, let your cry out. Come on, Grammy and Grampy, let your cry out. Jesus. Thou son of David. Have mercy on us. We need you, Lord. We speak the name of Jesus tonight. Jesus. Shandarababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababababab